Today, I'm going to take a look at these uh, cheap RFID modules and cards that I got uh, a while back in, in some various mailbags. But first, as is tradition, beer time. Today's beer is Legal Lager Hemp Beer from Fort Gary Brewing and Delta 9, who if you look them up, uh, you'll find is one of the companies that's local here, who is gearing up to uh, supply Canadian production when the government gets around to making cannabis legal in this fine country. It's a much more blonde beer, much more pale than I'm usually interested in. However, for science, I'm willing to give it a try. Uh, ta -da. A golden rye lager balanced with German hops that I can't pronounce. The rye contributes spicy complexity, while the addition of hemp seeds provides a nutty malty finish. The finished product does not contain THC or CBD. Hmm. Oh well, still. It's legal here. It says so right there. May not be in other free countries. Cheers. Hmm, not hoppy bitterness at all. Interesting. That's actually a good summer beer, I think. Right. On to the electronics. So I have a couple of RFID reader modules here. I'm hoping that I got, there's two different frequencies of them. Um, one is 125 megahertz and one is 13 point, do I have it written down here? Uh, 13.56 megahertz. Um, and in my reading, I think this one is the 13.56 megahertz. So hopefully this one, ah, it calls it an RF-125, but that doesn't mean anything. Since this one already has pins on it, let's play with it first. Just gonna pull all the tags out and push that off to this that uh, thing off to the side for a minute. So, in order to use this, we'll need an Arduino and a breadboard to throw it onto, and um, have to put a library into the uh, into the Arduino IDE as well. So the first thing to do is I guess get the library um, and just using the built-in library manager there's an assortment of them but I have chosen this one um, which is for the specific board I've got the MRFC 522 and I've already installed it as you can see it says install there if I hadn't I just click on it and select the version and click the install button but since I've already got it off camera let's just leave that alone and as with almost every library it comes with some examples which is what we're going to play with let's just start first I guess with this one which is called dump info which as the name suggests dumps all the info off the card so close that back there Open that up. Um, I'm going to use... What Arduino am I going to use? Oh, let's use the Uno. That's easy. Just, as always, just pick it out of the list here. Where is it? There it is. Okay, and when we're ready, we can just send that. In order to wire it up, um, nicely, the author of this has included the pinouts for the demos. So we're going to need the reset pin on the board to go to uh, pin 9, the SDA, the MOSI, MISO, and serial clock to go to, so 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 is what we're going to need. If we're using a different one, a different type of Arduino, we could use different pins, but that's easy there. So let's hook it up per those instructions. So I've just quickly hooked this up off camera because you've seen people plugging things in before, but basically there's the pins down there. 
um, cereal data, cereal clock, mostly miso, um, SQI, I don't think, or SOI, or whatever that is, SQI, is that in use? No, it's not. And then reset power and ground. This thing runs on 3.3 volts. Um, the Arduino Uno runs on 5 volts. However, the pins on this thing are 5 volt compatible or 5 volt tolerant. Um, they've got resistors in series with them, I'm guessing. Uh, so, I don't need a level shifter for this one. Which is kind of cool. I thought I might, but uh, everything that I've read says you don't. So, just hook them up and go back into the software and upload to the board. And uploading is as simple as just clicking the upload button. You can see down here it compiles. Grind, grind, grind. And when it's done compiling, do, 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 do. When it's done compiling, it uploads. And when it's uploading, you can see the lights flashing quickly on the Arduino, and then that's ready. So, we'll pop the serial monitor open. Uh, okay, it did some things there. It's scanning. I'm going to push the reset button on the Arduino just to see, see what, what happens. happens. Okay. okay. Let's see what happens when I wave a card in front of it here. It's not talking. Why is it not talking? Because when I was demonstrating this, one of the pins got unplugged. Okay, reset. So, now I wave a card in front of it, just one of the cards. And hey, presto, look at that. It's dumping all of its memory out for us. So there is... What do we got here? 63 blocks divided into sectors with 15, uh, sorry, 16 uh, bytes of data across it. So, 64 blocks times 16 bytes equals 1K. Wow. Oh, gee, duh. One kilobyte, it says so right there. Didn't have to do the math. Okay, so you can store 1K of data in this card, which is kind of cool. Uh, and the UID of the card is the card's actual serial number, which is in actually the first four bytes. So if you can overwrite the data, that would mean you can overwrite that too, right? Interesting. But yeah, I'm just gonna flail I'm gonna flail this key tag one now in front of it. And it's also a 1k byte full of data. Okay. That's neat. Um let's try these little dot ones here. I don't think they are according to the label on the bag, they are 125 kilohertz, so I don't think they're gonna work with this one. And no, nothing happens. Okay. Hmm. What else we got around here? Ah, we got a Vancouver Transit Translink Pass, which is, you can sort of see through there, there's an RFID uh, antenna coiled up in there. Let's see what happens with this. Oh, that's readable too. What has that got? 15. 64 bytes of data? Okay, that's cool. Where's another one? Oh, neat. Okay. Wonder if those are rewritable. Hmm. Have to think about that. What else have I got? Uh, oh, there's the access pass to my office. Okay, it doesn't read that. Um, here's access pass to one of my work locations. And it doesn't read that. 
Okay, so maybe those ones are speaking the, the 125 like that. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to bring up a different uh, script here now. How about read and write? Close that one back there. So this one's going to write in sector 1 to box 4 and 7. And I think those ones, well actually, the other script's still in there. So if I do this, and I put a card in front of it, So it says it's going to, where do we go here, write in sector 1, blocks 4 through 7. So sector 1, blocks 4 through 7. Okay. How is it doing that? So we got the same pinouts and everything there. Okay, so there it's setting up the data structure. Um, and it's saying in sector four block address or sector one block address four um, up to seven, so four, five, six, seven. I'm guessing. And okay, I'm not much on code as you know, but uh, looks like well, let's just try it and find out. So step one, of course, compile and upload. I'll save you having to wait for this. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Compiled and uploaded. Serial monitor. There it is. So I'm going to use that same uh, card as before. And if I read the code correctly, this is going to read it and then write back to it. So there we go. That's what it read out of it. Block one, uh, or sorry, uh, sector one, block four, right now has all zeros in it in the before. So it read that. Boom, there it is. Then it wrote this data to it, and there it is down there. Neato. So you can use that one uh, k of data f data space for writing whatever you want into it and read it back in your programs. That's kind of cool. I have no idea what I'm going to use that for, but it's still cool. So that's just a quick tinker with this thing. Um, the other thing that I noticed is that, let's get it sideways here and watch the lights on here. I mean, it's actually getting a little bit closer. So it will trigger from a couple of centimeters away. See that? That's a reasonable distance that it triggers from too. So you could put a piece of wood or plastic or something in there and hide that behind a panel. That's kind of neat. Yeah, so this thing, there's lots and lots of information online about this particular one. It seems to be very common. There's lots of tutorials. The other one, however, um, it is proving to be difficult to find any information on. But I guess, the well, I have to solder the antenna to it, which means I've got to figure out the pinout. And the first problem with that is focus. There we go. First problem with uh, figuring the pin out is lazy bastards didn't label it. So I'll have to spend some time Googling. I think I'll spare you that because you all know how Google works. After a bunch of searching, it turns out that IC Station has information on this little guy here. And if we go down, we have the pin out. And also, um, a little example circuit down there, which is not exactly what I'm going to build. I'm going to, uh, 
I'm just going to put the antenna in and put it in an LED and then take the serial output, uh, which is on pin 3. I'm going to have to figure out uh, some software for this thing too. Okay, so I've got the pinout from the IC station website. And the antenna goes on this end here. And the rest of the pins are five volt or sorry, ground five volts, serial out, LED, and a buzzer. If you're going to use it in that kind of an application. I don't think I'm going to do an LED or a buzzer on it. Ground first, then five volts, and then I need a serial out to go to the Arduino, which this thing uses software serial, which means it can go on any pin, but the sketch that I've found um, puts it on pins five and six, but I'm not sure which is transmit and which is receive. And according to the software serial demo, RX is the first one, which means that pin five is what my Arduino receives on. Right, here's some code that, I, here's the code that I found on that random instructables web page. Um, let's see if it works when I upload it. So let's try one of these little dots and see if it does anything. No. One of these. Oh, hello. How about this one? Try a different one of these. Oh, nothing happens there. My card from work. Um, my other thing from work. The first one. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be much happening. I'm going to reset the Arduino and try again. Okay, so it says RFID ready. So I'll take this one in here. Nothing. Maybe it was this dot that did something. No, this guy. Hmm. Not impressed. I'm gonna have to do some troubleshooting here. I think. Okay. Let's check my connections. I've added an LED to the LED pin just for fun so we can see what's going on. Um, and I've restarted the serial monitor and I've discovered that there's a sensitive spot over in the corner here. That... There we go. We have data. So it's not as awesome as you'd think it should be. Where are we here? And you can see there's some received data flashing over there as well. And it detects that thing. So that's kind of cool. So it does work. Not nearly as sensitive as I would have hoped. And it doesn't seem to sense any of these other types. So it is definitely 125 and these are definitely 125 meg. Um, where's this one from work? Uh, nothing seems to be happening there. Where's this other one from work? 
No. So that's a mystery. But it does sort of work. It does do something. Um, I wonder if... Oh, it also seems to work in that corner. I wonder if you have to bring it in quickly. No. Okay. So that's, all in all, that's a disappointing one. This guy, however, really works well. And it seems to be the more common, anyway, the 13, 13.56 meg. Um, these thing, these te uh, key fobs and these cards are readily available for fairly cheap on eBay. So if I ever come up with an application for this, I don't know, maybe uh, um, secure access to my uh, to my laboratory down here, or put a good walk on my uh, liquor cabinet. Actually, that might be an idea, because my kid is going to turn eighteen in another few months here. Hmm. Huh. That's actually probably a really good idea. <laughs> that way, my wife and I can carry these things around, and <laughs> and he can't steal my booze. Have to work on that. Anyway, that's an interesting little thing to play with. Um, hope you got some knowledge out of it. Um, weren't too confused by my random ramblings. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to those of you who have subscribed. Uh, apparently YouTube likes that and it helps my channel out. Um, those of you who have joined me over on Patreon and thrown a buck in a tip jar. Cheers to you guys. That's what, uh, what keeps my habits supported. Everybody... Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.